This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Celebrating 76 years of providing Tennesseans with high quality health coverage at an affordable rate. Visit FBHP.com to learn about their history in Tennessee. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we welcome to the Snickers Hot Seat. <laughs> <laughs> Can we call it that? <laughs> I think we just did. <laughs> that is so solid. In the solid. Snickers Hot Seat, <laughs> Coach Dave McGinnis, surrounded by Snickers in the jar. I, I, I could not be more proud to be in the Snickers Hot Seat. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I've accomplished a lot of things in my career. Well, this and is if you one. finish the show and you act good, you get a Snickers. It's I'm like try, somebody I'll, who does well in class. If you you get one, if you behave, you'll get a you'll get a Snickers. I will try my best. That's right. We're glad to have you. Um, love to be here. And why are we having Coach Mack on? Because it's time to get his expertise on what has happened so far in training camp. I have some burning questions for Coach Mack. Oh, great. Do you have burning questions for Coach Mack? I do, but I would like to hear yours first. My Maybe first. we can go back and okay. forth. So, you know, a like burning, a conversation. A burning question <laughs> that I have, the right tackle situation. Nicholas petit Frere is suspended for the first six games. From everything I've seen, he's run third team the whole time because they know he's – He's going to leave here the first week of September and not be back until mid-October, until after the London trip, which is understandable. So they've had different people rotating at the spot. How quickly do they need to make a decision from a continuity standpoint who's the right tackle? It's not, it's not time yet. It's not time yet at all. The thing that he's done, and you remember when this first came about, about NPF, the debate was – and we talked about it. All the three of us talked about it. Do you make one move or do you make two? They decided to make one move. They want to keep that center guard triangle as solid and as together as they can. Find someone to step ahead of the others at the right tackle. But it, it's not time yet. I think, Mike, I think they will go com all the way through it, Amy. They will go all through training camp doing this because you've got some real tests. You've got practice against the Vikings. You've got practice against New England. You've got a lot more call-it practices that they're going to do out here. And then you've got the preseason games. And so I think they will go right up to the edge because here's the other thing that's different in the National Football League than it used to be. You've got a week between games now, another whole week between, you know, you're not going gotta from. you got to buy. you got to mm -hmm. buy. Before Everybody the season. Everybody has a buy. So I think they'll go completely through training camp and all of those uh, spots that I talked about to evaluate those players because there's no reason to be in a rush as long as you can keep the center guard triangle solid and the left tackle slot solid. Now, can we learn a little bit of ball real quick before we continue on? Because you talk about the center guard triangle and you talk about it a lot on Titans radio. Like that's something that we hear discussed throughout games. Can you explain what that is and why it's so important? Those three work in tandem a lot together. Both edge players may work with their guards every now and then. But most of the times those guys on the edge are either by themselves or they're incorporated into a slide protection. The center guard triangle, those three guys, they are constantly working with each other. And the other thing that's happened even more recently in the National Football League, you are starting to see interior defensive linemen be the premier players on most teams' defenses. We have one here right now. So it's extremely, extremely important. The way the rules are now, the best way you can get pressure, it used to be, Amy, when you would take a seven-step drop and basically be nine and a half to ten yards deep when you dropped in a cylinder, the edge was the easiest way to get there. If you had someone that could motorcycle lean and skim an edge, now, as quick as that ball's coming out, interior pressure in your face and not allowing the quarterbacks to escape up into the B gap on either side is a huge part of taking timing away from your quarterbacks. So your center guard triangle has to work together. All right, so I want to follow up for the purpose of context here. Peter Skaronsky was going to be my next question about why they have left him at left guard only. You've answered that. You said they're trying to firm up the center guard triangle. If, however, they become unclear or uncertain about where they are at right tackle and they were to decide they might need to try him out there, how much time would they need to give that? 
he'd need some time because he's been a left tackle all of his career. And people will say, you know, Coach Mack, it's just moving about four guys over. Well, it's a big difference in footwork. It's a big difference in lead hand. It's a big difference in your power punch hand. There's a lot of difference between the left and the right tackle just as far as – I mean, it's, it's basically writing with your right hand or writing with your left hand. You can do it, but it would take, it would take a little bit of time. Now, if they have to do it, we're fortunate in the fact that this is a very technique sound football player mm -hmm. for a young player. So it might take him less time than it would somebody that is struggling. But uh, to me, I think they would rather keep that solid and, and have somebody be able to man that thing adequately until NPF can come and back. Your feeling is they're going to fight that with everything they have because – they have put him at left guard, they've left him at left guard, and they feel like he has a chance to be a top-level left guard. Yeah, and when you watch him at left guard, I mean, you can tell that that was a move for him from left tackle to left guard. But he has taken to it very, very well. And the other thing, too, about, you know, anytime you're around good guards in the league, we've had some great guards here with this franchise. I've been around good guards. You guys have seen them. They also, right next to that center, they communicate a whole lot on protections. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes on. This guy, I think, can be able to do that for quite a while there. As we're going through training camp, it's not just about solidifying that five up front, though. You also need to find a couple really good swing guys. How important is that going to be, finding guys who can fill in at, a multiple, um, at multiple different spots throughout the course of the season in case somebody goes down? Legitimate. I mean, it's very legitimate. And uh, the league has alleviated some of that because you can dress the eighth one now and not be penalized for it. It used to be, you know, you'd have to make a big decision between seven and eight as a head coach on your roster every week. Now they've allowed the eighth guy, which really, really helps. But swing guys, I mean, we've experienced too much of that in the last two seasons. But that's critical because what happens is it's not so much in preparation but it's when it happens during a game, you have to go in there immediately and, and be able to go to work and not miss a beat. So the swing guy is huge. And I think that, you know, just the rules committee listened to a lot of offensive coaches and a lot of offensive line coaches and probably head coaches too. Adding that eighth guy makes a big difference. All right, your question now. Your, your hot topic, what's on your mind, Amy? Well, there's a lot of things on my mind, but I want to start with Tim Kelly because as we have been going through training camp, we've been talking about some things on offense that were going to be a little bit different because Tim Kelly is taking on a bigger role as the offensive coordinator this year. What has stuck out to you, Coach Mack, about the Tim Kelly offense? Pace. I mean, the, p the pace of it, and I think it's come from abbreviating things. I mean, there, there are things now you can – they're in and out of the huddle, you know, very, very quickly. And, again, we get to watch practice every day. So there are things that we can't say that we see. But things that you can see and that, that they have in the open practices, you are going to see a multiplicity of personnel groups. I mean, more than and, – and you're going to see guys in different positions, which, you know, and I go to all the walkthroughs too, like you guys do too, where you can you can – hear them coaching you can hear the corrections but you can also get an idea of what they're they're trying to add on let me just say this about that they feel i think they felt very good about the way this team was able to grasp the offensive the newness of the offense in the otas because they've started to layer the, their ins installation in other words they're not just the the two call it periods that we had the 30 minute uh two call it periods a team period they weren't just playing vanilla anything. There weren't vanilla on offense, and they sure weren't vanilla on defense because they were overload blitzing, they were bogeying. They were, I mean, so they're pretty, they're, their installation, coaches feel like these guys are up to speed on it. But the, the thing that you notice just with the naked eye is the pace of it and then the, as many personnel groups, you know, just not by down and distance, but by scheme. And there's a lot of really good things that, I, that I'm, I'm watching, that I like what they're doing. Coach Dave McGinnis is with us on the OTP, sitting in the Snickers hot seat. <laughs> we invite you to open, open a Snickers, but also open a Titans checking account from Pinnacle with at least $100 and a reoccurring direct deposit by August the 18th. And you could get two tickets to five Titans home games. Details at titansbanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy. Member FDIC. 
Along the lines of the offense, what have you seen DeAndre Hopkins add from a football standpoint in terms of how he is affecting the offense? Is there another adjective other than everything? Okay. <laughs> now, it, it all <laughs> seems serious, Mike, okay. because look, this guy, and you think, you know, you say, well, Coach Mack, I mean, you know, you got that's just one guy. But what he has allowed them to be able to do now, you are able to now have complementary pieces do complementary things. Ah, okay. This is, a, this is a dude, and he's a legitimate dude. And you can tell just with the, with the setup that they are doing, and I'm not just talking about which side you line up on. I'm talking about who lines up in the point on the three-man, the nine-ball stack, who lines up at front on the stacks, who lines up into the boundary, who lines up to the field, who lines up with plus splits, who lines up with minus splits. And the other thing that... that and he can do all of that, right? Well, yes. But see, here's the thing about him. He can do all of that, but other people now can concentrate on the complementary piece to what he's doing. The other thing that I've noticed, and again, i got to be careful with what I say because sure. you know why, is that with, with any of these hot read adjustments, you got a veteran quarterback and you got a veteran receiver. You already see that showing up out there which is really, really big because sometimes w when you're able to get on that same page, a bad play can be a good play if you can make an adjustment. When I mean, it's the difference between driving in the parking lot and driving on the freeway. I mean, th things are just moving fast, and if you've got somebody that understands how to operate in space when it's moving fast, it makes a big difference. So it's a, a circumstance where... What is it they say? I'm trying to make sure I don't botch the phrase, but rising tides raise all ships. Is that right, lift all boats, lift yeah. all boats or whatever they say? Basically, he, the caliber that he's playing at makes everybody able, able to raise their caliber of play. That's right? exactly right. Because I mean, that, you have that, to that, account that, for him. That's that, exactly that and right. Because, and, and also, I think what you're saying, too, and correct me if I'm wrong, is he and his skill set allows other people to focus on what they do better. A hundred percent, Mike. A hundred percent right there, because that is, that's big. Instead of now making people have to do a whole lot of different things, you know that he can do different things, and so people can concentrate on just some things. And Traylon Burks is just concentrating on doing what he does, which is, looks pretty special. He's a completely different person. I mean, you know, last year was a rough time for him. Let's just be honest. He came in here, first of all, he was not in condition. And, and very few of these guys come in from collegiate football in NFL condition. They, you know, they don't, you know, their second year, they've got NFL bodies if they work on it. You know, a collegiate body might be good, but it's not NFL. It's not professional. And then, I mean, he was not in condition, and then he had the asthmatic problem. And, you know, it, that was, I mean, people really jumped on that like they had him in an iron lung, just about. <laughs> <laughs> But and he, it wasn't that drastic. But what he did, he went to the people that could help him, the head coach, Frank Perino, what Rob Moore, what do I need to do? He stayed here and worked consistently. He's a different player. He's a different dude. And then you bring, you bring D-Hop in here. I mean, they're at the hip now. You can see him at the hip, and that's, that's, that's invaluable. All the years that I've coached, Mike, I've, I've seen really, really good players take a young player under their wing and elevate their game quicker than they would elevate just being by themselves. We're talking about all of these different pieces and all of these different things that are going so well for this Titans offense. If you're Ryan Tannehill, you've got to be licking your lips a little bit, getting ready for this season and what's coming along because all of the sudden – He's got a world of options open to him, whether it's schematically or because of personnel that he hasn't had in the last couple of years. Well, when you really look at it, and I mean, we're looking at it objectively. I mean, you know, no, nobody's here, you know, we has got any pom-poms about this. We tell the truth here. He's got playmakers at every position now. Mm -hmm. Now he's got legitimate playmakers at every position. And I'm sure because you guys are deep into it, we'll touch on you know, what we've added there in the backfield too, but that makes a difference. But all of a sudden now, he's not just limited to basically, you know, you know, looking through a straw at what's going on. Now he's got a big picture of, he's got a lot of people, a lot of places that can make plays. Well, and you talked about Burks and you talk about Tannehill. I mean, 
Both of those players were directly impacted by the loss of A.J. Brown. I mean, there's there's no doubt about sure. it. And the thing that Ryan had with A.J. is he'd throw it up and give him a chance. And you've got to have confidence in the guy to do that. And it didn't look like they had as much of that last year. Well, and here's the other thing, too. And we talked about this before, you know, even when the thought of, of D-Hop being here was his game, his entire career has been – even if he's covered, throw it to him. Right. Because you, you guys have both watched him now. We've watched him up close, and we've watched him on tape. And you can – I mean, the guy's got – you know, he's got bear traps on his wrist. I mean, they're, <laughs> it's amazing how big his hands are. But the other thing is he can be covered, and you can have your hand as a defender in the basket, which in the basket is when the receiver's here. Right. This is the basket, and he can still – catch your hand and catch the ball with it so he doesn't have to be wide open all the time to throw it to him you can throw it to him when he's closely covered because he's going to win most of those matchups and he's always been deceptively like just wire cable strong he's not real thick but he's he's kind of like cj2k was like that right you remember how i mean cj2k was wire rope I mean, he really was, and, and had a lot of tensile strength to him. So does this guy. And plus, this guy's got an attitude. He always has had one, and he still's got it. Well, you talk about the loss of Brown, but there had been other losses over the previous couple of years. Well, now suddenly you have a tight end in a conquo that you trust because he's in his second year. You have another receiver in Burks that you trust because he's in his second year, and you have D Hop, and you potentially have Kyle Phillips in that in that place as well. So maybe you're sort of back to that 1920 sort of feel that Tannehill had, where there was more confidence, more on the same page, not being worried about making a mistake. Well, and and and, and, a, and a guy like Nick Westbrook Akine now doesn't have mm -hmm. to be your top receiver. I mean, he can fulfill the role that he needs to fulfill and you've got a couple of young guys that can, you know, that might be able to step in and help. And and to me that makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference uh, two ways. In game planning and then in critical must-have situations, you've got other options rather than one. Right. All right, so you're up next, Amy. Can you guys believe we've made it this far and haven't said the name Derrick Henry yet? I think he said Derrick Henry. Did you say Derrick Henry? I said running back. Oh, see, that's not okay. the same. Sorry, uh -huh. edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I just it's exciting to be talking about the offense and be talking about so many other pieces that aren't Derrick Henry, but I still feel like we should because he looks like it's more of the same here in year eight. And then there's the addition of guys like Tajay Spears, who we're all so excited to sure. be watching. Right? You know who's happy that we haven't talked about Derrick Henry as being just all we have on offense? Derrick Henry. Yes. Because this, this is going to – and you're right. I mean, he looks he's – in, he's in fabulous condition. And, and, and he's got a mindset that now – but you, the things that he can do, he's, he's different. I mean, we're really fortunate to be here during his career because he's different. And, and his, he's a big difference, and especially when he has help around him. And then you bring Ty J. Spears into it. I mean, this kid's got a little juju to him. He's got something to him and something that not – I'm not talking about just going in for Derrick Henry. I'm talking about being a, a piece of this that Kelly can use in a, several different spots. So that's, that's got to be exciting, too, because – for Derrick Henry. Because when he's the focal point – and we've seen it. I mean, it, he, has, he has played against more eight and eight and a half man boxes in the last three years than any running back in the league. Hands down. Now he may not have to. Tell you what's going on at Duncan. It's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home or listening to the game at home. <laughs> Duncan, is, they need to change that line, don't they? Duncan <laughs> is always there to help you get your game on, just like the pros. We need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of our game day ritual and your game day ritual, because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. Can we shout out the Duncan Donuts over by us here? Um, they were 
just magnificent this morning. Got me in and out of there. 12 donuts and a coffee in a, like 45 seconds. The one at Rosa Parks. The one at Rosa Parks. They do a great job there. I'll tell you what. It was the most efficient thing I did all day. They were great just Saturday. We got some donuts and a, and a box of Joe, which is mm-hmm. their coffee, because we had some guests in. Yes, that's, that's we it. We had five t- students in, and, you know, they, they ate everything. So uh, yeah. <laughs> had Charles Davis and Charles Burmeister Davis and, and Paul Burmeister were here. Yeah, and they were one yeah. free We had food. everyone, and so uh, free everything. our Duncan over here is uh, it's top notch. It was the greatest part of my morning, so shout out to you guys. It the was great. The thing that impresses me about the Duncan thing, especially with – Mike Keith and Amy Wells with the Titans, is y'all know how to use that app so good. Love the app. That's a Mike Keith thing. I struggle. Mike's an expert. He crushes the app. Oh, my gosh. Master of the app. You yeah. are a master yes. of the app. I mean, and I you're just, sitting in the Snickers hot seat me, right now. The Snickers hot seat. Mm-hmm. Let me just <laughs> would you mind, for <laughs> the video viewers of this, would you mind taking the top off and just showing those are real Snickers? How about that? This I, is this is a real snicker. That's a real snicker. This is the kind of snicker that you would want to get when you were trick or treating. That's exactly yeah. right. A you, full. They're a full, full sizers. You don't want to get those those little bitty ones that when you well, look at. Well, they're good at, too. Well, they're good, but you got to eat about twelve of them. <laughs> this right here, when you're trick or treating, and makes you so happy. I'm so happy sitting here by them. Now, and you if told you're listening to this, if you're not watching it, if you're listening, you'll just have to trust us that he has real. You snickers know what a Snickers seen. looks like. You know what it sounds like. Yeah. He's got the wrapper. And plus, the that's it. Yeah, thanks, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> well, that, see, the key to a full-size Snickers is that's how not to get your house rolled. The if you're, no. if you're giving out a full-size candy bar, you're good. They're rolling the neighbor. Protection. If you're, yeah. If yeah. You're they're rolling out, the neighbor. If you're giving out minis and you're giving out <laughs> toothbrushes, you're going to get rolled. Well, the toothbrushes or people giving out something healthy i gave out dum-dums one year and i was told that i was the worst house on the block All right. I, l- Can I we like get back them, to the show now yes sure okay <laughs> yeah now you're getting sorry better. after no. all this time now you're getting better no this, no this is what does it now the line has been crossed in year seven <laughs> here this we is are the mo- i mean you made reference to dum-dums are I those think bad th- amy, i think at this amy, point it's time to move on amy's like she was good. in a confessional at the catholic church well, i just started, wanted to contribute my halloween tale but no <laughs> she let she us move on she confessed dum-dums. i was giving no, advice no no i was giving the ot people <laughs> advice on how not to get your house rolled well then she said her neighbors thought she was the worst house on the block did you get rolled? No. I lived at a townhouse, though. They're harder to do. <laughs> Can I ask a question now? Please. Okay. Save us all. Linebacker Aziz Alshire coming over from San Francisco. Oh, yeah. He has impressed Coach Dave McGinnis. Oh. Why? For, you know what? The, the, the dude's built like Keith Bullock, number one. Okay. He's long. As a lifetime linebacker coach, and, and Rand told me this about him, and so I went and watched the times he got to play in San Francisco. He is a really instinctive K and D guy. K and D. Which is key and diagnose. Okay. He gets ahead of blocks so quick. He had a couple of plays in that 30-minute segment a couple of days ago when we were watching that he gets ahead. The best second-level linebackers I've ever been around, and I've been around some really good ones, but the best ones are guys that can get ahead of blocks. And what I mean by that for our listeners is by, l- by getting and diagnosing and processing by film study your bird rabbit keys, which are run pass keys, sure. really quick as to where you're not playing everything 50-50. And once, you, once he sees it, he's an immediate trigger. He is an immediate trigger guy. I love this player. So you're not running around a block, which is often dangerous because – you oftentimes leave a hole by doing so. You're beating the lineman or the blocker to the spot 100%. to where you that, can take advantage. That's it. I mean, and, and in this league, for guys behind the ball, because of how athletic and how much more physically larger offensive linemen are, you, you can't afford to do two things. You can't afford to middle them up, which, I mean, go right down the middle of them because they're going to engulf you, and they hold, which is fine. You know, and you also have to be able to get ahead of them because if you get if you if you keep trying to play a jazz linebacker all the time, which is a slip and slide dude, they will just push you by so fast. So you got to be able to get ahead. You got to be able to get ahead of the block, and then you've got to be able to work vertically back up the field as to where the hole is trying to open. But to get ahead of a block, you got to understand what you're keen and looking. And if you're playing things 50-50, you're behind on defense. 
because a slow, correct decision on defense is wrong. It's wrong. You're done. You're done. I like this player a lot. I really like – and here's the other thing I like about him. And Rand signed several of these kind of guys this year's free agents. He never was the dude, and he wants to be the dude. And those are the kind of guys at that stage in their career – where they're just about to, you know, they want to be the dude, but because of who's in front of them, they're never quite going to be. And you give them that chance, I think we're going to see the best of him. Uh, I really, really like this player. I think Arden Key's the same way. All right, let's start. He was on my list. Yeah, Arden he was. Key. That was great. Well, that you know what? That's because you and I really are smart. Well, no, <laughs> it's, well, you are, but no, uh, Arden Key has grabbed everybody's attention everybody's attention are we getting too excited about Arden Key no because here's about Ar- Arden Key has always uh, really intrigued me since he's coming out of LSU because he had he had a world of ability but Arden Key and he admitted it a couple of days ago when he was available to the press he's matured mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's matured and figured it out I mean at one point he weighed 280 now that's a big man but that's too big for what his skill set is. Now he, and the other thing is, all of this all of this energy that you hear that he has, and if people never watched him practice, it's legit. It is legit. And the players say, and he starts at 6.30. I've been around these Energizer Bunnings before. They start at 6.30 in the morning, and they don't stop. I mean, they feed off of their teammates. And, what, and we're not getting, because he's another guy. He's never quite been the dude. Mm-hmm. But now with his maturity, and he understands what being the dude can do for you. I mean, let's just be honest. What it can do for you career-wise, what it can do for you monetarily. And he is benefiting by the fact that now Harold Landry's coming back. He's benefited by that. And so, to me, are we getting too excited about it? No, because you, it's, not, it's okay to get excited about good players because you know that they're going to perform. So was it Aziz Alshire who had the quote this week? Arden Key is from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. He never stops talking, which is 100% true. And I think Arden might have said, I've never met anyone from Atlanta that d- d- know that would stop talking. <laughs> 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 I thought, now, that's a good that's quote a, that right there. That is a good quote. Well, and, and, and if you're out there and listening, and I'm, I'm sure in the building, I mean, I'm sure in the building, in the meeting rooms, and he's, but I, he does it in a constructive way. It's not an. It's probably annoying to the offense. Oh, I would think. Yeah. But it's it's perfect. The best defenses I've ever been around in my career have been loud, loud, communication loud. But if you're loud and you're not producing, then you're just a big dog barking behind a fence. Right. But if you're producing, then you're a big dog out in the front yard protecting things. And so, this guy here. I like him. I do too. He's uh, fun. He's a fun guy. He is fun. And plus, he's got he's got a little bit of lean to him. And the other thing about him is, he's not just an edge guy, because he's got enough stuff in his neck that they can move him around some. Harold Landry being back, you touched on it just a little bit. How much is that elevating the entire defense? I, I think mentally, first of all, it's big. And then you really looked at, at where Harold Landry was going into next last season mm-hmm. before he got hurt. He was just getting ready to peak. I mean, he came off of what, a 12 and a half sack sure. season? Mm-hmm. Got the contract. Before. Yeah, got the contract. And he was the thing that makes me very happy just watching him out there with no brace on is he's smooth again and he's still got the lean. He's got the lean. And so he, he adds a lot, a lot to this defense mentally because when he's on the field, he's a dude mm-hmm. and, and they respect him. But physically, I mean, he's better than he's ever been, and he'll say that, you know, because he had 11 months to do nothing but get ready for this time. Breaking news. Mm. Titan fans going to want to hear this. It's official. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. That's right. The deal is finalized, and SeatGeek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans, Ken fan. Her line, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mike Keith, Amy Wells, Coach Dave McGinnis in the Snickers hot seat here. Are we concerned that Snickers melt when it's the, hot? In the Bet MGM studio <laughs> at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Are, no, they don't melt. You know, they're, the great, they're great frozen, too. Yeah, so maybe it should be the Snickers cold seat. All right. 
doesn't work quite as well. I'm just saying. You maybe. Um, Will Levis, it feels like, has had a really nice start to training camp. Good start last week through the course of this week with pads coming on and team things happening. And then obviously the quarterbacks aren't getting hit, but more things being added in on installation. Feels as if he's in a pretty good place. Do you agree? Both of y'all have watched practice with me since OTAs, right? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Much different than OTAs. Really? Correct. Yeah. You feel like? Oh, I know. Okay. Much different. He came in here. You never know how guys are going to react to being high draft choices. And he was a high draft choice. And you never know how they're going to, especially at that position. He came in here trying to do everything at once. That's not the way it works in the National Football League, especially at that position. He's really gifted physically, tremendously gifted physically. He has slowed everything down now and is starting to throw just, I can't say it on the air in the OTP, but his arm strength is different. Mm -hmm. But now what he's done, he's starting to understand cylinder pressure. He's starting to understand that windows close quicker here. He's starting to understand the concepts of what's going on. He's much different than he was in OTA. He's adjusting. And, he, oh, and, and, and he has worked at it. But it, it's a mental adjustment for quarterbacks so much because it's so much different. The field dimensions within themselves make it so different as to where as their uh, plane of view that they see. So much different. The hash marks, you mean? The hash marks because, I mean, the field's different. It, it really is. And then plus – you're only going to see so many coverages, you know, in the collegiate game. Let's be honest, because they've only got 20 hours a week to put it in. Now he's seeing everything, and that's what I liked about those two 30-minute call periods. Defense was bringing stuff, bringing stuff, making. But he's a completely different guy than he was in the OTAs because he has applied himself. I like both of those guys. I, li- I like he and Malik both. You know, you can see you can see the growth. So they're getting good coaching, but they're they're taking to the coaching and they're working at it because that's it's it's hard playing quarterback in this league is hard even if you've been at it for a while, but they've adjusted and I I, I kind of like it. It's going to be a big off I mean big preseason for both of them. I want to talk about the secondary, and this includes corners, safety, everybody back there. Okay. I want to talk about that whole group okay. because it feels like to me throughout. What we have seen at training camp so far, there is not a group on the field that is bringing more heat and more excitement out to the field than that group of people. Am I correct in saying uh, that? I, I agree with you 100%. They are, they are, they are lit. Yeah. The whole practice starts with the new secondary coach, right, Chris Harris? I think it does. I mean, it, look, coaches have an effect on their players, mm-hmm. and you know, I say that having been a coach for a long, you have an effect, and. But they're playing with a lot of confidence, mm-hmm. and that's what you know. That's what brings that's what brings it out. That, I mean, there's a lot of juice at practice when they're going offense against defense. But I agree with you, Amy. I think this group has, and you look, you've got two really solid people back here at the safety, and we talk about talking and being loud. And I mean, the people that are up in front of them and the people that are to the side of them. I'm talking about our two safeties now. They're so confident that what they are saying means something that they are starting to feel confident. And then when they, they're making plays, I mean, it's everybody that's rallying to the, you know, and you're right. I mean, and I think that's a big thing. I think Christian Fulton knows this is a critical time in his career, critical time. And so he's come back ready to go. Sean Murphy Bunning has added a lot to this thing. And Roger McCrary has settled in at that slot. So I agree with you. I think your observation there is 100% correct. And that's contagious. Now, we talked about how, how, how uh, the people up front have always started to. But now what you've got with this defense, you've got dogs. You've got guys at every level. Start picking at every level. We talked about the line. You know, we talked about the linebackers. And I think Monty Rice is a really nice linebacker. He's a nice compliment, you know, to Aziz, you know, next to him. But we, we move from the, f- the front to the back. Now, all of a sudden, you've got playmakers. And that just that all that does is engender confidence, and confidence, as I said, best defenses I've ever been around have been loud. This group's loud right now. We'll mm-hmm. see. All right, Amy, coach has to get to a meeting, so we we have limited time remaining. 
Do you have any more questions? Do you have one more great question? What do you want to do here? What do I want to do? Yeah. I think I want to pitch it to you. Do you have one more great question? I don't know if it's a great question, but it, it's pretty obvious. This week is essentially over in terms of how it's going to go. Some walk through time off coming this weekend. And next, getting ready for the first preseason game. Uh, the Saturday noon preseason game on August 12th at Chicago. How different is next week for these Titans in terms of what you've seen from what Mike Vrabel has done so far in this training camp? Well, it's going to be a little bit different. And, and once the coaches decide who they're going to play in this first one, the people they decide to play, big week for them. Big week for them. Because all of a sudden, all of this thing that we've talked about, they've been doing it on familiar territory. I mean, it's kind of like when you were a kid, when you played in your backyard, you really felt good about what you could do. But once you went out and got out to the public playground and you, everybody else was showing up, then can you take that game to the big stage? This is the first big stage a lot of these guys will be on. So this week will be a little different once they decide who, you know, who, they, who they're going to play. But you guys know this. I've said it so many times before, but it's, it's, it's an axiom in this league that is so true for players and coaches. Every day is an interview. You've got a big interview week coming up next week for these guys. And anything that goes wrong can put that check mark, which can take you off the list in a hurry, even if it looks like you're going to be on the list. Every day. Yeah. You are filmed every day. You are filmed every day, and the film is there. And so if you have a problem, you can't say, yeah, but. There's no yeah, buts when you look at tape. It's right there. And so that's the, that's the mental pressure of playing in the National Football League that a lot of times eliminates players. Even though everybody that's here has got some sort of athletic ability or they wouldn't be here. Right. You don't just bring guys in the building because you like them. They've got some – but those that can handle that kind of stress mentally, I've seen more of those guys that could – do it physically but just could not handle the mental stress day in and day out day in and day out and then work it towards the the, the competition point uh, so it's going to be big to find out you're listening to the otp and we thank you for that please subscribe rate and review and remember our fine sponsor farm bureau health plans who's been serving members and protecting their health for 76 years Learn about their Tennessee roots at FBHP.com. Coach Dave McGinnis, thank you so much for, for getting us ready. And you are worthy of not one, but two Snickers. Two Snickers. For yes. your performance in the Snickers hot See, seat. And look, and th these are two. Le well, they're two exactly the same. but Well, no, they're really not. <laughs> two, two le one of them's upside down. Two legitimate Snickers. That's right. Great being with you guys. Yes, thanks. Thanks. And not dumb dumbs. No, they sure aren't. Yes. Well, that, 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 they that, sure that, aren't. That tipped your gyro so quick, yeah. no. Amy Wells. It's fine. It's going to be worse after the OTP. Oh, yeah. Everything no, no, is no. okay. As soon as, soon as we're off, as as we're off not air, go both, well. we'll both get the wrath yes. from her. It's everything is fine, it feels, guys. It feels really fine. <laughs> it's everything everything fine. is it's fine. It's like that dog cartoon where the fire, everything's the fire is behind him. He goes, everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> for Coach Dave McGinnis and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP.